Hello and welcome to my Muddy Puddles Chimps Guide. This should be pretty easy for most of the way through, except like two rounds. So, uh, yeah. So first we'll start by putting Quincy right over here. And a visual indicator I would use is the out tip of his range hitting the outside of the track. And if you do that right, you shouldn't have to micro him at all for round six. If you got the placement just right, the only thing you'll have to do is to put him on last until the end of the greens where you'll switch him back to first. Sometimes you might have to micro a little bit more than that, switching between first and last maybe, I don't know, I can't really remember. Before round 9, you'll place a sub right here, and uh, no more monkey team sadly, and you'll use a visual indicator where the outside of his range touches the outside of the track, except a tiny bit which shouldn't. And you'll put the sub on strong, and then you put a dart monkey as up as possible, and put it on last. Before round 10, set your dart monkey to strong, and buy a new dart monkey. The best visual indicator that there really is for this dart monkey is that the sub's helmet goes in between its eyes, and you'll set the dart monkey to last. And in the middle of round 10, place a dart monkey as soon as possible so that its range is half inside of the right track and can see a little bit of the left track. If done right, you'll barely survive, and yeah. Also, before anyone asks, this entire early game was taken directly from Frosty's channel because I couldn't really come up with one. Oh yeah, rapid fire the yellows on round 12. Very important. Put a sniper up here and set it to strong before the start of round 13. And then before round 14, place a sub so that its range goes into halfway, about halfway, into the top part of the track and about halfway into the bottom part of the track. You should take it slow for round 15, because you gotta do a few things in the middle of the round. Eh, not a few, actually just one, but... So, you're going to place a sniper as soon as possible down here, and set it to strong as soon as possible. If you do it fast, you won't have to micro it at all, but if you don't do it fast, you might have to micro it a bit. 16 is a very RNG based round, sometimes you'll have to micro the sniper, sometimes you won't. Usually I would just set the bottom sniper to first, like a second or two after things reach the bottom dart monkey, and then set it back on strong for the yellows. And then give your sub longer range before the start of 17. It's not important for the round, just do it anyway. But for round 18, upgrade your sub to advanced intel as soon as possible and then rapid fire the massive wave of greens that comes at the end of the round. You should probably take it slow for round 19, because it is the most RNG based round in the entire run. You usually will have to micro the sniper a tiny bit. Usually you just want to set it to first once things reach the bottom sniper, which they do most of the time. Here they didn't, so yeah. And then upgrade your sub to twin guns before the start of round 20. Before the start of round 21, place a dart monkey at the top so it can give your sub some intel. Before round 22, upgrade your sniper to full metal jacket. And this round is also very RNG based, sometimes you have to micro your bottom sniper, sometimes you don't. And for round 23, you usually shouldn't have to micro, but sometimes you do. I don't really know. As Frosty Mate says, just get lucky. Rapid fire the purples on 25, and upgrade your sub to airburst darts. From now on, it's a lot easier and a lot less RNG dependent. I'm not sure how much RNG there is, but there is a little bit on a few rounds here and there. Place a druid at the top, and start upgrading it to druid of the jungle with hard thorns. Get druid of the jungle before hard thorns. It's not really important, just do it anyway, okay? 
To avoid a sad death on 33, upgrade your first dart monkey to enhanced eyesight. Upgrade your sub to triple guns before the start of 35. If you really want to, you can rapid fire the first wave of 36. Usually you don't have to, but if you really want to to prevent any possible RNG, do it. Upgrade your sub to armor piercing darts in the middle of 37. And then rapid fire the camo wave. After the end of 39, no earlier, buy an alchemist right next to your sub and upgrade it to berserker brew with perishing potions. This is just to prevent any alchemist RNG that might happen on this round. Place a village above your sub, and not in range of the alchemist just yet, but where it looks like it will be in range of the alchemist once you get bigger range on it. And then get jungle drums before the start of round 43. You can also rapid fire on 43, but as you see here, the balloons don't make it to Quincy most of the time. And then buy the discount upgrades on your village. Over the next few rounds, place a heli where I do it, still in range of the discount village, and start upgrading it to Moab Shove with Pursuit. Rapid fire the ceramics on 49. This is very important to do because, yeah, if you don't do it, you'll probably die. At some point before round 51, upgrade your heli to Comanche defense. Yeah, this tower does have a decent amount of RNG baked into it, but you should be fine most of the time. Also, you can arrow storm on 51 if you want to. Buy a beast handler about where I do it, so that the range goes on the outside portion of the rightmost track, and then start upgrading it to Horned Eagle, or Great Eagle, Golden Eagle, whatever the heck it's called. And also, in between rounds, you're going to want to start moving the grabbing point, which is that bird thingy in the Beast Handler menu, to as early in the track as possible. Well, not as early in the track as possible, but close to that every round. Aerostorm, the fourth wave of 55 which is also the last one, so yeah, just do that to make sure you don't die. Feel free to rapid fire on 56 if you're scared of camos for whatever reason. Don't forget to move the grabbing point thingy to the start of the track, or the start of the active track every round, and then upgrade your beast handler to big condor, also known as slightly less big bird. Before round 59, you're going to want to place a mortar in range of the discount right about where I do it, and upgrade it to signal flare. This is just to deal with the camo leads and it will provide some nice decamo later on. Before round 60, buy a new beast handler over here, and place it right about where I do it, and then upgrade it to horned owl and merge it into your previous beast handler. And then put a new one at the bottom and do the exact same thing. For round 60, I forgot to move the grabbing point. It didn't matter too much, but sometimes it does. Don't forget to move your grabbing point every round. That's very, very important. And then place another beast handler down here and upgrade it to Horned Owl and merge it into your big, slightly less big bird beast handler. Woo! 
63 is the round that can vary the most depending on RNG in this entire run. So, you're going to want to take it very slow. And you're going to hope that all three Comanches activate for the first one. If only two activate, you should be fine, but that might mess with ability timings a little bit. And the second wave should be fine as well. And then the third wave, you just want to use Aerostorm. Make sure to move your Condor's grab point. That is very important for 64. And for 65. Just move it to the active track every round. Just, it's not that hard. Might take a bit, just, but just do it anyway, okay? And over the next many rounds, start upgrading your other three beast handlers to slightly less big birds as well. Also, move your signal flare to the far left lane in preparation for 67. Move your signal flare in preparation for round 74 because there are camos this round. I would take it slow on 75 even though I didn't here. I think I just trusted the condor that much. But if you want to, you can take it slow here even though I'm pretty sure it's not required because Condor is good. Move your grab point to the right for 76 and arrow storm the round just to make it quick. Arrow storm the first wave of 78 as soon as possible just to make sure you have it up for the second wave as well. Toward the start of 79 is when you should be able to afford your final condor. And now we start the big save up for the big bird. And use rapid fire when Quincy starts attacking the ZOMG on round 80. one can get a bit close sometimes, so feel free to use a Storm of Arrows as you shouldn't need it for 82 or 83. Okay, I might have lied. Sometimes you do need to use it for 82 or 83, but you should have it up for both rounds if needed. But for me, it didn't get anywhere close. Except on 83 a little bit, kind of, not really. So, yeah. doesn't usually get close, but if you want to use a Storm of Arrows, you can, as you don't need it for any of the next rounds, usually. There's a massive cut here because I left my PC to do some other stuff for like 10 minutes, and the recording got all of it, but 85 is pretty easy. You just need to rapid fire when the ZOMGs get in range of Quincy and he starts attacking. You also might need to arrow storm this round, as you can see it got a bit close. Or you trust Comanche defense with ceramics, which you really shouldn't, but yeah. Right at the end of 86, or before 87, you should be able to afford Big Bird. This is quite close, but... Yeah, you can still afford it, so if any price changes get made, you're screwed. 
And now that you've acquired Big Bird, you probably don't want to do this again. So make sure to move the grabbing point every single round so you don't die. Yet another massive cut because I'm pretty sure I was watching Heat Nick's game too. It was close, okay? Before round 90, place a spike factory right at the bottom and upgrade it to spiked balls with smart spikes and put it on smart. And then also give it a 300 alchemist. This is exclusively to catch the occasional leaking ceramic which does unfortunately happen. So yeah, this is just to be 104% safe. Because yes, round 91 is by far the hardest and closest round of the entire run. I'm not exactly sure why, but yeah. So you want to use rapid fire when the ceramics start to get past Quincy, and then arrow storm once they reach the bottom sniper, which they do like right, not here, but I think it does happen here. Yeah. Once they reach the bottom sniper, you want to use arrow storm. And then your very large flying animal should clean up the rest of the round. And then after round 92, you don't have to do this at, you can do this after the round, you don't have to do this right now, but put another beast handler and upgrade it to gyre falcon, gear falcon, whatever it's called, to give the big bird slightly more range. And then place a spike factory, you should do this after the round, but place a spike factory on the right side and start upgrading it to the same path as the first one, and also give it a 300 alt buff. Over the next few rounds, you're going to buy a Sabotage Ninja and put it right next to your Mortar. This is this is only used like twice, but it's still very important for these rounds. And then upgrade your right sub to Ballistic Missile on the path to eventually upgrade it to First Strike. And then Sabotage, Sabotage, Sabotage like a second after you see the first DDT. This is just to make sure your big bird doesn't have to run all the way to catch the DDTs. So if it gets overwhelmed at all, feel free to use any Quincy ability, like it does right here. I end up using Storm of Arrows here. Sometimes you don't have to, sometimes you have to use it earlier. This game is weird. Feel free to use Rapid Shot if your bird gets overwhelmed at all during the start of 96. After round 97, upgrade your sub to first strike. For Quincy, you want to rapid shot as soon as you start to see fortified Moab. Before round 99, place a spike factory right over here and upgrade it to spike storm with smart spikes in the middle of round 99. Also sabotage about 2 seconds after the round starts. And now place a tack shooter like right here and upgrade it to tack spray with even faster shooting. This does a tiny bit of damage to the bad, which helps, and then upgrade your sub to twin guns. Move the bird's grab point to the start of the round and first strike as soon as the round starts. 
and then spike storm when the bad starts to turn to the right. And then after this happens, you're going to want to move the bird's grab point down toward the bottom, right next to your spike factory. And then here, you're just going to hope you don't die, because you shouldn't. And feel free to arrow storm right when the bad pops. I didn't have to, but sometimes you might. And then once your bird has grabbed everything, you've pretty much won. Good job. You should now have your Muddy Puddles Chimps Black Border. Hopefully you enjoyed, and have a nice rest of your day. Goodbye. I'm also starting to work on the Ouch Guide. I have a few ideas for a strategy. Those being... I'm not going to reveal my secrets, actually.